um, 33b. And we're in the middle of the Gemara. The Gemara is talking about the Eruv that we put out outside of a city in order to be able to travel beyond the uh, uh, beyond uh, 2,000 Alma of the city. And it has to be, as we learned, it has to be within the same space as your Konish visa, that you are making your space in. So if you are if if you are in a public domain where you're making your your space, so then the Eruv also has to be in the public domain. And if you're in a private domain, the Eruv has to be in a private domain. So the Eruv has to be in the same place that you are. That's halacha number one that we were dealing with. The other halacha was that you have to be able to access the Eruv. It has to be within a space that you're able to get to it um, uh, um, which we said that if it's in a tree, there's a problem uh, the, because you're not, you're really not allowed to take something off of a tree. We said according to, to, to Rebbe, you're allowed to on account of that it's, it, it's accessible. Thank you so much. It's accessible uh, on, uh, at, the, at the moment of the onset. Um, and one of the questions we, had, we were dealing with in the Gemara was, what about if your Eruv is within a tree um, and, and uh, you know, where, where, the, where in the tree is it going to count as a proper uh, Eruv? So one of the things the Gemara had said was, what happens if you are, if you put it inside uh, when a basket attached to the tree? And being that the basket is in the tree, um, that will extend the space where your Erev is, which the Erev is has to be within a four, a four Tfachim space. But the question was that the Erev, there's a problem that the Erev is in uh, the tree, which is um, a, a private domain, and he is in the public domain. So the last part that we saw was that we're talking about since a tree itself, since the basket itself is til- uh, turnable, you, while it's still attached to a tree, you can turn it, upside down, and then the top of the tr- basket will be within the tent fachim of the ground, and you can reach in and get your bread that's in there, that's going to mean that your a- your Eruv is accessible within the space you're in, and that's going to be uh, a, a valid uh, a valid Eruv. Um, the Gemara is now going to say, based on that idea, we have a question. Based on that, if if it, moving something uh, a, a, into your space is going to be a valid form of making an Eruv, well, then what about a case where uh, you had your, your, your Eruv on a, uh, on a, in a chest, in a, in a, a, a armoire, a, a cabinet, and uh, I can now bring that cabinet down into a lower domain. That's really the next Gemara's uh, question based on uh, on this idea that I can tu- I can turn the basket into my space. So the last uh, three last yeah the, the five last lines of thirty uh, three um, b. Rabbi Yirmi Amar Rabbi Yirmi has said a basket is different on account of that I can bring it and turn it downward and then it can be within the tenth facham of the ground and then it would be within the same domain as the person himself making the Eruv. Yosef Rapapa v'ka'ama l'ashmaita. So Rav Papa repeated this teaching. Esav e Rav Bar Shava l'Rav Papa. So Rav Bar Shava asked him. Ketzad o Esav. There's a b'risa that teaches like this. Uh, if somebody wants to uh, uh, send an Eruv out to, to a field uh, out, outside of the city. And uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is a, um, a mission in regards to Yantif. So you have Yantif prior to Shabbos. And you want to have an Eruv that you can travel outside of the city, go 2,000 Amma beyond the limit of the city, that you, beyond the limit of Eruv that you normally can go. You want to go an additional 2,000 Amma. So what do you do? So at the onset of Yantif, you're going to put a, a, a meal there, 2,000 Amma outside of the city. 
and that will be your Makam Shvi. So that will be designating your place for the Shabbos or for Yantif. But you want it to still be there at the end of Yantif, at the onset of Shabbos, so you can do the same for Shabbos. Now, if you leave it there, um, animals can get to it. There may not be any food left by the time Shabbos enters. So at the onset of Yantif, you'd send this messenger out there to, to put it down for you, and the food uh, uh, is there. And that defines your space. And then you come, they bring it back to you into the city uh, for Yantif. And then at the onset of Shabbos, they bring it back and put it there for you. Um, now, uh, uh, Rashi here mentions the discussion that's going to come up later in the Masechta. Uh, do, do you have to have a meal in order to, to set your place outside of the city? If I myself go there, and at the onset of Shabbos, I am 2,000 Amma outside of the city. Is that enough for me to define that as my space? Because that's where I physically am or not? And we'll see the two opinions. But Rashi is, is, brings that up over here because over here we're talking about that he sent with a messenger, he sent someone to bring the food, meaning he himself is not there because he, if he himself was there, perhaps that would be sufficient for him to define that as a space. In any case, it's at the onset of Shabbos. So what does he do? Uh, uh, so at the onset of the first day, meaning before Yantif, he sets the meal over there. Umach Shechalov waits for it to, to, for the sun to set. So this is his place. And then Venotlo and brings it back, a bullet and brings it back in. Besheni, and on the second day, meaning on the first day of Yantif, the next day prior to the second day, which would be Shabbos, Mach Shechalov, there he leaves it there. Vaochlo, and then he can eat it there. He can leave it whatever he wants. Obala, and then he comes back. Now we go to Lamed Aleph, Lamed Aleph 34a. Amai. Now why is that? Nema, he should say, uh, if you say that he could potentially bring it to himself, so over here also, if he wants, he can bring it from the city. So why does it have to be that he actually has the, the Eruv there? He doesn't need the Eruv in, 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 uh, outside there. Because after all, in Yantiv, on Shabbos, of course, you can't carry the Erev out there. But in Yantiv, you're allowed to carry. There's no prohibition of carrying out on a, in a public domain. On Yantiv, anything that you need for Yantiv, you're allowed to carry. Anything that has some sort of use. So, uh, so he can carry the meal from the house out there. So why does the Erev actually have to be there? If you're telling me the, uh, the basket hold, is holding my bread, and the bread is in a different domain, but since I'm able to tilt it down and bring it into my domain, that counts. Well, then when it's back at my house also, that should count. As long as I intend that that's my space. So even if he didn't bring it, it should count. Command am to you, dummy. It says if he brought it. Amar Rabbi Zera. So Rabbi Zera said, you're right. For Yantiv, that would work. But if somebody saw you do that on Yantiv and say, hey, look at him. He's got food in his house because... After all, he can carry it there, so it's a count as an Erev. So he's got food in his house, and he made an, and that counted as an Erev, as designating his space out 2,000 Amma away. Well, then for Shabbos, they're going to do the same you know, next week. But Shabbos, it's not true because he can't carry it out there, so it doesn't count. You can't actually bring the food out to there. Because Yantav after Shabbos, you actually cannot do so, right? On Yantav, on Shabbos, you can't carry it, and it wouldn't actually work. So we ask another case. What about this case? So somebody intends to have his Eruv in a public domain. What he did was he put his Eruv in the wall um, in a, a, a indentation within the wall. And this indentation is going to be uh, um, within the tent Fachim. So it's within below the tent, within the tenth fachim of the ground, he puts his Eruv right there in some hole in the wall. Eruv, Eruv, it counts as an Eruv because he himself is within the, uh, 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 within the public domain. Now, if it was within his four Amos, in any case, it's going to be in his public domain, as we saw earlier, that when any time it's within your four Amos, your four Amos, uh, your space in a public domain, counts as, 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 as a private domain in regards to the travel and the Eruv. But this Eruv over here is 
a little further down. It's outside of the reach of where he actually is sta- it made his space for Shabbos, but it's within a wall. And, uh, uh, and, and that, since it's within the wall of the public domain, it's going to count as, uh, um, this is a question we saw earlier, it, it, we saw in, in the Gemara and Shabbos, holes in the wall that are from a public domain. Does it count as a public domain? Does it count as a Carmelist, depending on various things? But in any case, this one is a Carmelist. This is a non-public domain, but not a private domain. It's the in-between uh, space. Uh, but it's not within the private, it's not within the public domain, but nevertheless, it's within the airspace of the public domain and he can bring it to himself. So that's going to be permissible. And the Eruv Eruv, so that's going to count as a good Eruv. But if he put it up higher than ten Tvachim, say in a, in, in a indentation up there, so a, a higher up than ten Tvachim, in Eruv Eruv, that's not going to count as uh, as a, a, a good Eruv, because it's going to be in a, in a separate space from him, and it's going to defi- be defined as a, as a private domain, and he can't take it from the private domain into his own space. However, if his intent is, you know what, I can't be in the public domain, I'm going to get trampled. And he says, you know, I'm going to go up on top of the wall, on top of a dovecote, uh, and, and this is where he makes his shvisa on top of the dovecote, or berosh migdal, or on top of a cabinet of some sort, uh, on top of a, a, a chest. And all this is above ten tefachim off the ground. Eruv eruv. So then the eruv is going to be a good eruv because it, it, the eruv is not in the public domain, and he's not in the public domain. However, if it's below ten tefachim. Uh, uh, it's going to be an invalid, um, uh, I- invalid eruv, ain't eruv eruv. Now, it's true. So, so Rashi here has two interpretations of of uh, uh, of what the case is: whether he the the he himself is in the public domain or he himself is in the private domain. Is the eruv in the public do- in the chest? Or is the heir of outside the chest, and he's making this cabinet, this this shavuach, his his space? We're going to go with the with the second in, in interpretation of Rashi. And what's going on is that uh, he put the uh, the heir of in the wall. Um, so let's just move that right here. All right. So his heir of is in the wall over here, and the in the and the place that he's deciding to make his Eru, his Shabbos, is on top of this uh, of this chest, which is essentially his private domain. It's a private domain now, and uh, the 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 problem is that there's um, uh, if the if the Eruv is in below ten tefachim, it's in a nine tefachim space which is usable for the people traveling in the public domain, well, that's going to make the Eruv invalid because the, he is in a private domain and the Eruv is now in the public domain. Uh, and and uh, he can't bring it from the public domain into his space, so that's going to make it an invalid Eruv. Uh, however, uh, uh, the Gemara is going to ask, Ba'amai, why is that invalid? Hachanami over here also I should say After all, he could bring the chest that he has made his designated space for Shabbos on top of this cabinet, on top of this chest. He can actually lay it down, and when he does, that's going to be in the public domain. And if he can lay it down in the public domain, it's going to be within the same space as the bread, and it'll be valid. So Rehemia says, actually, we're talking about a chest that is, that is nailed into the wall. Um, and since it's nailed into the wall, it, you, you can't actually move it. It's not going to be uh, valid. And so, but of course, you're right. Just like the basket can bend into the private, to public domain, and you can take it out, so too, and it would count as a good Arab, so too over here, you can move your own space down into the public domain where the bread is, and it'll also be valid if it actually moves. But if it's attached to the wall, you can't do it. Rava, my Rava says, 
Rav says there's another issue. Uh, the, the, the idea is whether or not he can pull it in, he can pull the bread in with a uh, rope. Uh, they don't have an image for that here. Okay, whether you can pull the bread in uh, with a rope. Vagam emigdal aruch askina di mamti le purta. No, sorry, that's. Sorry, Rav has a, a different interpretation. I, I skipped uh, to the last one. Rav's interpretation is that the idea is that it's such a tall, it's it's such a tall uh, chest that if it were when he lays it down on its side, it's going to go beyond the four amas of his space. So now that's going to count as carry, moving his space and carrying to a uh, in the public domain beyond his space. So if the chest was less than four amos, uh, let's say six feet. So therefore, it's going to remain within his domain. But now that it's so tall, and he's bringing it down, uh, when he lays this chest down um, on the ground, it's actually going to go beyond four amos. That's prohibited. The imam de porta if he's going to put it down, it's going to go beyond the four amos. So now the Gemara says, hey, chidami, id ikkakavto masna laisi. If there's actually a rope attached and there's a hole in the cabinet where he can pull uh, um, the, the, the ro- with the rope. He can pull the bread from the wall into the cabinet. That's going to be permissible because as we, as we saw in the Gemara in, in Shabbos, when, whenever you have something still in your hand, even though it unrolls, say yo-yo, or the case over there is actually a scroll of of Kodesh, you have a, 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 a Sefer Torah, something like that. You have the scroll in one hand, it's in, it, it, one end is in your hand, the other hand unrolled. So even if it goes in the public domain, it's going to be uh, permissible to pull it back if it's Sefer Kodesh, because really on a Torah level, that's still in your hands. And rabbinically, it's prohibited to pull that back. Your yo-yo, you can't just pull it back because from the public domain into the private domain because it, it, it looks like it's in the public domain. But actually, it's still, because it's a good be other, since it's, you're still holding on to it, it actually is still considered in your domain. And therefore, this bread, which is going to be out there on the, on the, uh, 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 on the wall, but it, its rope is still in the chest, it's going to count as, as if it's in the chest. Even though rabbinically, you can't bring it back on Shabbos, but we said at the onset of Shabbos, uh, the the uh, the uh, will be uh, by twilight. Uh, rabbinic prohibitions do not apply according to Rebbe, and uh, therefore you can define them eruv as within your space because at that moment you could still bring it back, even though on Shabbos you can't. But on at the moment that you're that that's defining your space for Yantiv for Shabbos, that space is being defined with the bread that is still being able to be brought back at that moment. Um, uh, the less the governor must, but it, it, and and if there is no rope and window, so then you can't bring it back, and then it's not going to be a good eruv. The Mishnah further said that if he had the eruv within a pit, um, that uh, it, it's not going to count as a a good eruv. So now the Gemara is going to say, okay, so what is this case? Sorry, it's going to be a good eruv. So what's this case that it's in a pit? Hi, bor de koyehecha. Where is this pit? is the pit in the private domain, so it's in, within an enclosed wall, right? So, so then it's, a, then it's a, uh, the entire thing is a private domain. So the Gemara says that, of course, that's going to be a good Eruv. We turn to Lama Dalad, Amad Beis, 30, uh, 34b. Private domain goes up to the, heavenly, uh, to the heavens. It's a totally private domain, and and just like it goes up in the airspace, so it goes below. So if it's a private domain, a pit, a hole in the ground, there's also going to be a private domain, and it's going to be the Eruv and him in the same space. So what are you going to tell me? The pit is a manhole in a public domain. Well, then let's analyze. Where is he intending to, have, to make his Shabbos space? If he's intending above in the public domain, so then he's in a different domain than the Eruv, and it wouldn't count as a good Eruv. If he intends to be in the manhole, in the hole in the ground, in the public domain, 
Shita, who very Rav Malkam Echad, for sure it's a good Erev. He and the Erev are both in the same space. But Tzricha the Kaimakamas. So it must be that this whole is talking about actually in a private domain, sorry, in a Carmelis, in a non enclosed private domain, in a non public domain as described as a Rishus Arabim de Oraisa, 16 feet wide. Um, from between, it's open from one end of the city to the other. A, a proper Rishus Arabim, a, 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 a Torah level public domain. Rather, this is a, a non Torah level public domain. The Kaiber Carmelis, it's a Carmelis, the rabbinic public domain. Then Eschav and Lishwis and his intent is to be in that public domain, in that Carmelis, that rabbinic non de Orisa public domain. And the Eruv is going to be in a private domain because it's in a pit. Well, then how can he get it? Oh, this is the opinion of Rebbe, the Amakal Davashim Shmushmus, Lagazir Lebin Ashmushus, at the onset of Shabbos, where he is making his place in the Carmelis. True, the rest of Shabbos is not going to be able to bring that, that bread up from the pit into the Carmelis. He's going to have to go down and eat it there. But nevertheless, at the onset of Shabbos, which defines his space, is a, he is allowed to go down there and bring it up. So it's going to count as a valid, uh, it's going to count as a, as a valid Eruv. The, the, the next Mishra says, he's going to, uh, it talks about where the Eruv is out in some sort of, uh, on top of some sort of stick or some sort of uh, reed. They put on top of a, a, a stick, a pole, if it's not attached to the ground, uh, it's just stuck into the ground. Even if it's a even if it's a hundred alma up the ground, it's going to be an eruv. And as Rashi says, the top of it always has to be four four tefachim by four tefachim. So it needs to be four tefachim because that's a minimum valid space, significant space, in order to have the the eruv on top of uh, on top of it. Um, but the bottom of it is not four tefachim wide, so it's not going to count as a private domain. Rami le Ravada bar Masa le Rama. So Ravada bar Masa asked Rama, "Tolush v'no, it's in. It's only because it was not attached to the ground, meaning it's not a tree. It's it's something that was detached and you stuck into the ground. But tolush v'no, it's light. But if it was actually." Uh, uh, um, it not detached from the ground, meaning it's a tree, it's something naturally attached to the ground, it's not going to be good. So Mani, whose opinion is this? This must be the opinion of the Chachamim who disagree with the Rebbe and say that even at the onset of Shabbos, Ben at twilight, you may not use anything that's attached to the ground, a tree, because you may come to tear off a branch. So too, over here, this Erev, which is going to be in a tree, is not going to be valid. And, and that's why the Mishnah says it's a stick that's a pole, a reed that was attached to the ground and stuck into the ground, but not naturally attached to the ground. So you're not going to be harvesting if you break off a piece. But in the previous Mishnah, we explained it according to Rebbe. Which means that the previous Mishnah is Rebbe and this Mishnah is the Rabbanan. Is that correct? Yes, indeed, this question was asked already by Rami Bar Chama to Rav Chista, and he said, yep, the previous Mishnah is, is according to Rebbe, which says that at the onset of Shabbos, Bein Hashmoshes, when you're setting your Shabbos space, in that twilight, you're allowed to, um, uh, you're allowed to uh, retrieve something that rabbinically would be prohibited on, on Shabbos, but it's not Shabbos, uh, uh, proper. It is Shabbos. You can't do uh, Malacha. It's going to be defined as Shabbos, but it's twilight, and therefore you're allowed to do rabbinic prohibitions, and this would be a rabbinic prohibition to take something off of a tree, and so at that point the Eruv is still accessible to you. And our mission over here that says that it has to be a, a reed or a, a pole stuck into the ground and it can't be an actual tree is going with the Rachacham and say, no, you can't have your Eruv on a tree, on account of that you may break off a branch and it's rabbinically prohibited and, and the Chachamim hold that even in twilight, even in Benash Mashas, you may not uh, do a rabbinic prohibition. Ravina Amar, however, Ravina says no. Kula Rebbe, all this is according to Rebbe. And Rebbe makes a distinction between uh, a, a branch, a, a, a tree, and, and this. Over here, in a soft reed, 
where there's a separate concern. Buy a, buy a branch where it's hard. So you'd have to intentionally break off a piece. So that's a rabbinic prohibition that maybe you're gonna break off a piece. But over here by a soft reed, it's breakable. And therefore, if you're gonna actually climb on it to get your bread, it will break. And that's going to be considered a, uh, uh, an intentional act and would be a malacha, which is going to be harvesting and therefore it's prohibited. Gemara tells, I will pull Lenardo. It was a time that, that soldiers needed to be housed. The Redcoats came into town and they said, all right, we're setting up shop, everybody host us. So the, this army came in to Narda. I'm a lawyer of Nachman. So Nachman said, you know what? There's no place for us to study. Go out before Shabbos. Huku Avidi Kavushi Kavshi. Go ahead and, and, and bind up some, some reeds so that we can sit on them uh, tomorrow. But Agma in the swamp, and this way we'll have something to, somewhere to go to study because uh, they're, they're everywhere. They're taking over the place. And so tomorrow we'll go out there and sit on it. It says only something that is detached from the ground may you use, but something that's attached to the ground, meaning the reeds themselves, should be prohibited. The, 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 it depends whether they have already hardened, um, uh, and and it, therefore it's more you're for sure going to break. But over here, um, when they're very soft, like like vegetable greens, there uh, there's no prohibition at all because it's not going to break. You're just sitting on it for leaving. How do I know there's a distinction made between whether they're soft or hard? The tani we learn hakanim. The reeds, and uh, um, another an, another name for these these are like twigs and branches, Bahigan and and uh, thistles, thorns, min ilan hain. These are all types of trees. and they would not be considered planting your vegetables in a vineyard, which is a mixed seed. But Tani we have another brayse that says hakanav akida va'arbanin min yerakain, and then we have another brayse that says that reeds. And and uh, kidam, it's a it's a type of uh, spice. And uh, urbanin, which is uh, uh, an, uh, seemingly another type of spice, um, uh, but it, or it's a um, or it's like wicker baskets, wicker for baskets like um, reeds. And now miniarek, these are all vegetables. Van kalai and if you plant these in a vineyard, it will be kalai. It's going to be a mixy. So Kasha Adadi say, I now have a contradiction. In one Bryce, you tell me that reeds are like trees. And another Bryce, and they're and they're allowed to be in the in, in a vineyard. And another Bryce, you tell me it's soft, uh, uh, sorry, it's like vegetables, and it's gonna be like uh, it's gonna be prohibited in, in a in a vineyard. So what's it, how do you answer this contradiction? Elishmamina, Kambu is rodin, Kamashaino is rodin, Shmamina. So we see that there's a distinction between whether they're hard or soft, and uh, it's going to depend on whether they are uh, um, uh, bendable or not. The kida min yereku. Now the says, wait, are you telling me that this kida, this spice, is a, is a vegetable? But not ain't markivim pegem im ki al gabi kida levaynam. Mepneshu yerek be'ilot. You can't mix uh, um, uh, pegem, which is a type of vegetable, um, in in um, in the uh, translation in the back of the Gemara, he says that it's a type of uh, of red cabbage. In any case, you can't put them together with kida, with white kida, because you're putting a vegetable. You're, you, it's mixing a vegetable with a tree. On our papa, kida lechud, the kida van lechud. He says that there's a distinction. Kida is a spice, and that's a vegetable, and kida levana is this white thing, and that's going to be, uh, that's not a spice, that's actually a more, uh, um, more like a tree-like, and it's going to be prohibited. The next mission deals with that you have to have the air of accessible, as we saw before, not only accessible halachically, where it has to be in a tree that you're allowed to take it off of, uh, it has to be accessible in a way 
uh, that you practically accessible. You have to be able to get it. And if you lost the key, it's going to be invalid. Yet the Mishnah says it is a good Eruv. Rabbi Leazar says in the Mishnah, if you don't know where the key is, um, uh, then it's not going to be a good Eruv. So Gemara says, what's the reason or the first opinion that says it's a good Eruv? After all, it has to be in the same space and you can't access your Eruv because you lost the key. He's in one place and the Eruv is in the other. We're talking about a, a, a brick uh, uh, box, a big brick uh, uh, storehouse that's made for this Eruv that actually has not been cemented together. So you could just pick up bricks and access it. Rabbi Meir says that you're allowed to do so since they're not, they're just laying on top of each other. They were not actually cemented together and it's not attached to the ground. And so therefore, you're allowed to, in order to access your bread, you're allowed to move this. The Tanan, as we learned, you have a, ro- a room full of produce and it was sealed up. And now one of the bricks came out, it, 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 one, part of the wall came apart. You're allowed to take out produce from where the hole in the, is. However, Rabbi Meir, I'm a pechaz of Netul Achatri. Rabbi Meir says you can actually start removing the bricks themselves. Now, this is talking about where it's uh, just a pile of bricks and not actually attached. So, to these are uh, just, just bricks that are sitting on each other. Now, the Gemara says, But wait. Over there, we said that's only on Yontif. It's not true. On Shabbos, you're not allowed to do so. You're not allowed to remove it. So our case also is going to be talking about Yontif. Well, if that's the case, what's the reasoning of Rabbi Eliezer? We have a Brisa Rabbi Eliezer says, then it depends. If you lost the key in the city... Uh, so then the Eruv is going to be a good Eruv because if you do find the key, you're able to bring the key to where the chest is and open it. Um, as, we'll, as we've seen, according to, Rabbi, uh, according to Rabbi Shimon, we had this machlokas multiple times now that we mentioned this, that there are private domains that you need an Eruv in order to carry in, meaning a joint meal, the courtyard. The courtyard is... A, 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 it, it's an enclosed space. The roof, it's an enclosed space. The uh, wood storage area, it's an enclosed space. All of these spaces have the halachic status of an enclosed space, but nevertheless, you're not allowed to carry only something that was in the courtyard, maybe carried in the courtyard. You're not allowed to carry from the house in the courtyard unless you made an air roof, you have a joint meal. Same goes in the roof, same goes in the uh, wood storage area. And Rabbi Shimon said, since all of these are the same category, you're allowed to carry from the courtyard to the roof and from the roof to the car pave to the you know, storage area. So therefore we see that according to Rabbi Shimon, uh, uh, that, that all has one halachic status. Therefore, Rabbi Eliezer says, in this, if you lost the key in the city, in a city, then it's not a problem because I'll find the key and I'll be able to carry it from the courtyard to the roof and from the roof to the, to the other areas until I can get to where the chest is and open it because it's all one space. However, if you lost it in a field that's outside of the city, there you're not going to be able to carry it. And so even if you're going to find the key, you're not going to have access. Now, however, if we're talking about Yantif, we just mentioned before, that on Yantif you're allowed to carry. Yantif doesn't have a limited uh, 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 a limitation of carrying um, uh, um, uh, in a public domain. So Mali im Mali saw this. If that's the case, what distinction is there? If there is in a lost the key in the city, he lost the key out in the field. It should make no difference. So this must be missing from that text, and this is what the meaning of the text is. He put the eruv in a chest and locked it up. And now he lost the key and he can't access it. It's going to count as a good Eruv. But when? This is only on Yantif. Because he can carry the key wherever he finds it. But on Shabbos, 
but on Shabbos it's not going to be a good eruv because he's not able to count it, to 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 access it. He can't bring the eruv, and this is going to be true according to everybody. Uh, uh, sorry, this is going to be true whether it's in the city or outside of the city. Uh, the city, because this version does not follow Rabbi Shimon and says that if you find the key in the courtyard, you're only allowed to carry it in the courtyard. You can't take it to the roof. And if you find it on the roof, you can't take it to the wood storage area. And if you find it in the storage area, you can't take it to anywhere else. And so therefore, uh, even if you find the key in the city, you're not going to be able to open the chest. And therefore, it's an invalid Eruv. Nimtzam of there, if you find the key, it's not going to be a good Eruv. However, Rabbi Eliezer, I mean, Rabbi Eliezer says, However, he says that no, Rabbi Eliezer follows Rabbi Shimon. And therefore he says, if it's in the city, it's going to be a good Eruv because if I find the key, right now I don't know where the key is, but if I find the key, I'll be able to carry the key to the Eruv box and I'll be able to open it. Only if it's out in the field, it's not going to be a good Eruv. Rabbi Shimon, like Rabbi Shimon, the Omar who said, Echad Gagos, Vechad Chatseros, Vechad Karfifos, or Shesachas Lakulon, uh, according to Rabbi Shimon, all uh, items that are in a courtyard or a roof or a carve, it's all one general halachic concept. And therefore you can carry from one to the other. And therefore if I found the key, I'll be able to open the box. And therefore he says that even on, uh, on, a, uh, on an Eruv, even on, a, on Shabbos, if you have the Eruv key locked, uh, uh, the air of locked and the key lost, you're going to be able to find it and carry it over, so it's going to be a valid air Out in the field, it's not going to be valid because I can't carry the key back, even if I find it. The Sadein and Ruve of Karabanan, like the Rabbanan, who say, um, that we'll see this later, uh, the halacha is um, uh, if I have a, a, an item outside of a, the city or in the public domain, and it's needed for Shabbos, there are times that you're allowed to pass it from one person to the next to bring it in. So I, while, while I'm standing stationary, I can pick up uh, uh, the item and move it within my space. So I can hand it to you. And then you, you're standing in one space, you're not moving, so you can take it from me and hand it to the next and so on, and do such a human chain all the way to where it's needed. The Rabbanans say that you're not allowed to do that. There needs to be extraneating needs and circumstances. This would not be that. And therefore, the Chachamim say that if it's out in the field, even if you keep find the key, there's no way to bring it back because you can't make such a human chain. Uh, see you uh, in the morning, Be'ez Hashem, at uh, 7.15. For the rest of the week, because of Slichos, um, uh, the air, uh, the um, DAF will be at 545. Besides for on Friday, Erev Rosh Hashanah, it's 515.